Hello and welcome to the uh, 40th session of Physics 9. It's the 40th session, no? Napakahaba na talaga ng, ano, ng Physics 9 masyado compared to the uh, other uh, branches of science that we had for grade 9. Nevertheless, uh, I think uh, medyo marami ba to? Okay, nevertheless, ayun. Um, I am hoping that uh, with these number of sessions, sana ano, marami ka, ka, ka rin namang natututunan. Ayan. So for the 40th session, uh, we have the following parts. The first one is under observe. It's, it is a discussion about uh, Count Rumford's observations. And then it's going to be followed by an activity uh, that is uh, under observe, uh, where you are going to be discovering uh, James Prescott Joel's quantifications. And then um, the last part is, an, is a discussion about the mechanical equivalent of heat under gather information. Um, remember that uh, this uh, these parts are uh, found in the 7e-based self-learning module in Science 9 which I wrote for my master's degree. Particularly, you will find them on Unit 4, book number 23, pages 5 to 8. Now, itong mga uh, parts na to, uh, ng uh, session number uh, 40, are all uh, focusing on the following learning competencies and as you may see sila. <laughs> okay so for the first one uh, you should be capable of constructing a model to demonstrate that heat can uh, do work and in the second one you should be capable of inferring that heat transfer can be used to do work and that work involves the release of heat and then uh, the last learning competencies that you should be capable of um, explaining why machines are never 100% efficient. Ayan, so, uh, medyo marami tayong mga learning competencies so we can expect that uh, these sessions for book number 23 are gonna be quite jam-packed. Let's now begin with the first part of this session. For uh, Count Romford's observations, uh, we have been saying a lot about uh, how mechanical energy gets to be transformed from one form to another. When an object is set in motion, we can now see the transformation we have been studying about. In the course of such uh, transformation, work was always done. Um, yeah, when we say, uh, when we talk about mechanical energy, um, we always uh, talk about how energy gets transformed from one form to another. Kumbaga, that point has been made so clear, I hope, doon sa mga previous sa mga sessions natin. But uh, what I am not quite sure yet is whether or not uh, it is clear for you that uh, in such transformation, work is always done. Um, when a person uh, lifts a 50 kilogram weight of a, of a height of a height of 0 0.8 to 1.17 meters, uh, which is uh, something uh, we know is quite related to the uh, previous problem on uh, the bench press, we know that the gravitational potential energy of the weights were transformed into kinetic energy. Kumbaga, yung barbell, meron siyang gravitational potential energy and yung pagmumove niya from, uh, through this distance, uh, I think if, we, if I remember it correctly, it was around 0 0.37 meters, right? Um, that, uh, covering that distance and the exertion, of course, of force, that was actually the transformation to kinetic energy, doing work as well. The amount of change in the system's overall energy is referred to as work. Um, these were uh, quite related to uh, what Count Rumford were capable of observing. In this book, we will discuss how mechanical energy leads to the, to the production of thermal energy. Kung paano umiinit. Maybe you don't notice it, pero if you are uh, going to the gym, you might um, experience some raising of thermal rising or raising, yes, of thermal energy ng body mo, right? When you're doing a lot of uh, kumbaga, exercises in your workout. Uh, Count Rumford also uh, discovered something like that. But uh, not in working out, but uh, in terms of canon boring. Anyways, uh, canon boring is a way to enlarge the whole of canons because they tend to sometimes with usage, uh, they tend to be blocked by some kind of deposit on the side. Uh, canon boring is done by drilling a hole through the canon's shaft with the aid of horses 
that are tied around the pole and are made to move around. The movement of those horses, they provide the mechanical energy na kailangan para mag-work yung uh, cannonball. Now, Count Romford observed that his tools, yung mga ginagamit niya for uh, cannonballing, they get to be deformed para hindi sila yata nagme-maintain ng kanilang shape, parang nagbabago yung shape nila habang ginagamit sila. Now, he charged this observation to be the result of the thermal energy his tools are getting from the friction between his tools and the surface of the cannon. He then concluded that the amount of work done on the cannon is actually equal to the amount of thermal energy produced in the process. So, if the uh, if in the process of cannon boring, uh, it was capable of producing some heat, then some work was also done. Pero uh, as it progresses, as, as it uh, continues, as the cannon boring continues, it gets hotter. So therefore, there's also like more work that uh, was done in the system. Now, this principle lays the foundation of transforming mechanical energy to thermal energy. But Count Romford was not capable of explaining this, his observations mathematically, which was in physics very important. Kubaga meron naman siyang basic understanding na um, yung mechanical energy input na mayroon ang system which is from the horses nata transform siya into thermal energy but you know uh, he couldn't uh, explain that mathematically but yeah it's something that you could do okay? it's something that you could do uh, thanks to the efforts of course of the first uh, scientists Now, for the second part of this session, uh, we will be uh, looking into James Prescott Joel's quantifications. But uh, by looking at it, I mean, it's gonna be quite an activity. Now, uh, get two pieces of paper. I go ahead, get two pieces of paper. Let's fold one piece of paper until it is around one square inch. Mga ganun lang siya, um, kumbaga, yun lang yung area na Kubaga na occupy niya. Now, rub it on the other piece of paper as fast as you can for about um, 15 seconds. Now, carefully feel the sheet of paper. Are they warm? Okay. The application of mechanical energy on the sheets of paper produced a friction that led to the production of thermal energy. It's actually also observable sa mga palms mo. Like, if you're gonna put them together and then rub them for about Um, 15 seconds, maybe as fast as you can, you're gonna feel that uh, there is some kind of thermal energy that uh, builds up on your palms. And uh, yeah, you can use that to warm your ears on a, on a chilly day. James Prescott Joel was uh, able to quantify the relationship between mechanical energy and thermal energy through his paddle wheel experiment, which is uh, the one right here. He noticed... Thus, as the paddles inside the water tank over here continue to move in a circular mo- motion, the temperature of the water also increases. Now, when the weights are made to rise and fall, the mga weights ato, which does work, the paddle rotates, so it continues on rotating, which then uh, continues to raise the uh, temperature of the water. Baga. As uh, more work is done on the system, mas uh, nagiging mainit din yung mismong system. Now, uh, this shows how work can be done in a system to produce some thermal energy. And uh, this is similar to the process of uh, that is uh, being seen right here. To the process of producing fire by rubbing sticks together, you know, as a survival method. Do you know how to do this? Oh, I haven't t- done this yet and uh, I'm actually quite excited to try it out siguro kapag nagka-time. <laughs> It's a survival skill kasi. Um, more of these actually are uh, observable in our uh, daily activities, you know, rubbing things to uh, ignite them, parang ganun. But in the next sec- section, we will be tackling how much work is needed to produce how much thermal energy. So, We're actually going to be uh, dealing with numbers again to know how much exactly uh, is the work needed para makapag-produce ng uh, exact na amount din ng thermal energy which is something that is quite useful 
yung mga accurate na mga processes na to, they're actually quite useful in other applications as we know uh, in physics and in real life. Ayan. For the meantime, uh, what you need to do uh, for this uh, part of the session is that you need to draw a simplified version of the Canon Boring and the Paddle Wheel Experiment Setup. Okay. So, para siyang, ano, para siyang um, mental map ng kung ano yung uh, mga materials dun sa setups at uh, ano yung movements nila and what are their relationship relationships with each other. Siguro, uh, you have seen one like that before where you're only going to use arrows, some shapes, and some short um, group of words. Now, you'll be drawing your models inside uh, the boxes uh, like the ones from the next slide. So, on your sheet of paper, preferably a one-half crosswise, draw your uh, simplified Canon Boring model. You may uh, pause this video because I think you need more time. Are you through? Let us proceed to the uh, next one. Uh, this one for the paddle wheel model. Are you through? Okay, do not forget to show your work to me. Okay, uh, once we get back to school. Again, so that is for the second part of uh, this session, which is an activity under uh, Observe. Uh, that's uh, about uh, James Prescott Joel's quantifications. Alright, now let's proceed to the last part of this session, which is a discussion under Observe about the mechanical equivalent of heat. James Prescott Joel was able to arrive at the conclusion that thermal energy values have a mechanical equivalent and it can be acquired by dividing the amount of mechanical energy, so we'll be dividing the amount of mechanical energy or the work done in joules by the heat developed in calories. So, uh, in a formula, we can actually see this represented by the following. So, the, the mechanical equivalent of heat, which is J, is equal to the amount of, me of mechanical energy or work, which is W, divided by the heat developed. And uh, that is going to be our formula. So, if we're going to use that... Uh, in this uh, in in uh, in application if we're gonna apply it in the previous books we know that for every calorie of heat we have to remember that uh, there are uh, 4.186 joules work done now the formula above in the uh, previous uh, slide is in the form where it is looking for the value of mechanical heat so yung formula to it's actually looking for mechanical equivalent of heat yung j Okay, so uh, since J is always equal naman to 4.1866 joules per calorie, we can derive a formula for work. So we can just uh, do cross-multiplication, you know how it works. And then we're gonna get, uh, you know, W is equal to J multiplied by H. Now in some problems naman, yung value ng amount of heat uh, needed to change, uh, of heat needed to change the temperature of a substance of a body, is also required. Now, to solve for H, para makuha natin yung H na yun, we'll just be using the following formula. Okay. So, ang siyasabi lang dito, hindi naman minsan binibigay talaga ang H dun sa problem. So, uh, sometimes, ang bibigay talaga lang is mass, specific heat, final at saka initial temperature. Okay? And then, that's, that's what you're gonna get. If you're gonna I mean, uh, get the difference, multiply it by the, by the specific heat, and then multiply that by the mass, you are going to get H, which is heat uh, that's needed to change the temperature of a substance of a body. Yeah, so you're going to get that H by doing uh, or by using this formula first. Okay? So again, ang unang gagawin dyan is uh, ipag-minus muna yung final, tsaka yung... Uh, Initial temperature, and then multiply that difference by C, which is specific heat, always given yen. Or there, are, there is an actual table that uh, enumerates the specific heat of different substances, and then multiply that by the mass. Okay. Uh, so, the formulas we have right now are uh, presented here in this slide. I hope that uh, you took note of them. Uh, we will be uh, putting these into application in the next ses session. Okay, for the meantime, 
uh, let us review what we were capable of finishing in this session first. So, uh, we had a discussion about uh, Count Rumford's observations, then we had an activity about James Prescott Joel's quantifications, and then we had a discussion about the mechanical equivalent of heat. Particularly, you know about the formulas that are needed in solving for different uh, in solving different word problems related to uh, this topic. Now, remember that uh, in this uh, session, these parts are actually uh, focusing on training you on how to construct a model to demonstrate that heat can do work, okay? And that it also trains you to infer that the heat trans that heat transfer can be used. To do work and that work involves the release of heat and then the last uh, learning competency for this session is you should be capable of explaining why machines are never 100 percent efficient every single part of this session is found on pages 5 to 8 of the 23rd book of the fourth unit of my 7e based self-learning module in science 9. this is sir cj and i hope that i will see you in the next video lesson. Have a great day.